Okay, so I have here the uh, Futaba 10C, and this is the version that does not have the replaceable modules. And what I want to do is um, attempt to modify this so that I can fly Spectrum, because I, I really like the uh, micro binding flies. And I do have a um, Spectrum DX8. However, I, you know, I, I just really like my Futaba better right now. I mean, this is this is my radio of choice. The, the Spectrum is not a bad radio. It just kind of feels like a toy in comparison. Um, so what I want to do is I want to mod this to uh, hopefully accept a module. Now, um, let me show you the modules I have. First, I picked up one of these orange DSM-2 modules from Hobby King. And these are made for the Futaba module systems, which they explicitly list that this is not compatible with my radio. But it was like 20 bucks, so I figured, you know, what the heck. Now, I could, I've, I've already had this connected. I already kind of hacked this in, and it didn't work. Now, what happened was um, it was able to control the, the radio on I have an E-Flight Beast. And it was able to control the radio. The problem is the channel mapping was all off. In other words, you know, when you move the um, the throttle uh, stick, for example, it would move the elevator on the plane, um, that kind of thing. Or when you move the ailerons, it would it, on the sticks, it would move the rudder or, or various things like that. And first, I thought it was like a mode one, mode two problem, but then after doing some reading on the forums, I realized that Futaba and JR have two different. Um, standards for transmitting their PPM uh, protocols to modules or, or just even through the air, I believe. So basically, Futaba transmits, you know, the first pulse that comes out is, you know, channel one or the the uh, ailerons, I guess, or the rudder or the elevator, and et cetera. And then JR has a different sequence. Um, so unless you have a radio that can remap channels, then you're kind of out of luck. I might have been able to do something with mixing. I don't know. I, I kind of wanted something that was just going to work. So this, and I'll show you all this later on in the video. But this Hobby King Orange TX, I was able to get it to bind. I was able to get it to transmit. However, the channels were all wonky. So this isn't going to work. Um, so what I have now is an actual Spectrum brand uh, DSM-8, DSM-2 um, Futaba module. And... With the, I've read on forums and such that you can change the channel mapping inside this device, so I can make my Futaba transmit basically uh, remap it to the JR standard, which all like the e, the e, the Micro Beast um, uses the JR standard as far as I can tell. I, I mean, this would work, I suppose, um, if you were using Spectrum receivers and you just plug them in. You know, it's a different channel. So you'd have to plug, like, your throttle into channel 1 instead of channel 3, that kind of thing. But, like, you can't change that on, on the micro bind of flies. It's all kind of hardwired in, so you, you really can't change that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of take you through what I've done um, and, and hopefully try to document this whole process so anybody can follow. Okay, so here's my transmitter again. And I've already removed the screws. I've already, I've already, I've already voided the warranty. Um... So if we remove the back and get a look at the electronics in here, there's basically two things that are interesting to me. So first you have the trainer port, which you know, maybe we can utilize that. I don't know. Um, but this and, and I've already tried some of this, so I, but I want, I want to kind of walk you through it. This to me looks like a module. It just looks like a module that is soldered in. It's hardwired in and unchangeable. It's even in the same place that the module would be. Um, I just imagine that these five pins on the modules, I basically imagine that the module version of this radio would not have this board and these five pins would be broken out to the outside of the case to allow you to plug in one of these. So I'm hoping that um, basically what I can do is I got a little piece of header here. I'm hoping that I can break these out and then plug my module in and that'll work. Now, I must admit I kind of cheated because before I recorded this video, I first tried this with, I already, I already did this exact thing with the orange. And like I said earlier, I was able to get it to bind. So I, I know that this is going to work. Um, at least I, I know I'm going to be able to get it to bind. I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get all the control surfaces to line up to this, the correct sticks. I, I think I can, but um, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't gotten that far yet. So 
like last week I, I, I did this. To, to na now I'm going to try this. So uh, I'll be back. Okay, so I've officially voided my warranty and soldered this header on. And so I'm pretty much ready to begin. I must state that this isn't a permanent solution. Um, what I'm hoping is that if this works, which I, I, I'm, I'm hopeful that it will, I'm, I'm pretty sure, I'm confident that it will, that I can use these little jacks. Now what these jacks are for, are for these four conductor um, audio jacks. So what I'm hoping I can do is, basically since there's five pins, one of them I'm, really, I'm, I'm not going to need, which is there's an antenna connection, which connects, I, I suppose, to the uh, internal antenna. However, it's not needed because the module comes with its own external antenna that they want you to use. So I'm hoping that I can get away with only having to run four connectors, which would be great. Because what I can basically do is break out four wires to the jack. This would be mounted on the radio. And then I would go cable. And then I would see if I can install, find a place to install another jack on here. So I can basically patch between the two. And maybe even buy other modules for other types of radio systems and be able to just kind of create some kind of little universal system. Now I talked briefly about the uh, trainer port earlier. Um, I tried originally with the uh, orange receiver to tap into the pins on the trainer port which I originally thought were identical. However when I measured them on the oscilloscope I noticed that the PPM signal was much larger on the trainer port and I couldn't get the um, module to respond. So when I when I connected it to the five pin header up here, it did. So I, I'm not really sure what's up with that. Um, I don't know if there's any other differences that I'm not understanding. Um, but I was I was hoping that I'd have an easy like trainer port adapter solution, but it didn't seem like it was going to work. So um, I'm kind of moving ahead with this solution. Okay, so just to show you what I was talking about with the orange module, I have the orange module plugged in, and I have my beast here, propeller removed. So I'm going to go ahead, and the radio is not on, and I'm going to go through the binding procedure, which on the beast, I'm going to try, but I'm trying to do this, but i got to try to film at the same time. Okay, so um, the, the procedure is to leave the radio off, plug in the beast, and it'll do its little beeping and, and you can see the little LED in there is flashing and that means it's in bind mode. So now what I need to do again, trying to do this with multiple hands, I apologize. Okay, so the radio's off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the button and turn it on. Wait for the binding process to start. and it just bound. Okay, so I'm gonna now switch the camera to show you what controls are doing what. Okay, so here we are. So if you see, here's the throttle stick and I'm in US mode too. So if I press the uh, throttle stick up and down, my elevator's moving. Looks like rudder is still right. I believe ailerons is throttle, which isn't armed, thankfully, even though the propeller is off. But elevator, elevator is now ailerons. Okay, so as you can see, the channels are all out of order. So, and uh, unfortunately, with the orange module, you're not unable to, to change that or do anything about that. And you're unable to do anything in the radio about it. Um, maybe somebody will release a hack, which would be great, like a firmware hack that would change that. Um, but until that point, there's really no option to use, to be able to do this with that. So now I'm going to stop the video and, uh, switch over to the other module and see what results we can get. Okay. So I've got the, uh, the official spectrum module plugged in. Um, it was quite a pain to get it bound because the pin connections seem like they're a little bit loose. And every time I, I kept moving the radio, um, around just to be able to set up the shot, it would cause it to come loose just enough to um, disconnect enough to lose the, the bind. Uh, so I actually have it bound now and I wanted to show you um, that it seems like all the channel mappings are correct out of the box without having to do any channel assignments. Um, so if I move the stick, you know, ailerons, the ailerons move, if I move the rudder, the rudder moves. 
or I mean the elevator. The elevator moves and the ailerons are on the right channel and the rudder. And I, I don't have the throttle um, set up right yet. But um, everything seems to be mapped correctly. So um, I think now it's just a matter of hardwiring. Like I said, and this is going to work. Now you see, it actually, just by me moving a little bit, it has lost connection. You see that, that flash there. It is no longer bound right now. But if I press down on it, there. Now it's bound again. So, um, th like I said, this is kind of a fidgety connection, but it, it at least proves that I can make this work. So, um, with that being shown, uh, I think the next step is I'm going to hardwire it the way I described earlier, and I'll be back. Okay, so um, it's complete, and I wanted to kind of show you where, what the final thing looks like. So I have my module velcroed onto the back, connected via 6-inch audio cable. Uh, one change that I did make is I actually changed out the uh, SMA connector from the orange module and put it into the Spectrum. Otherwise, I would have had to have used this uh, antenna that came with the Spectrum, which I would have had to figure out a place to mount it. Doing this allowed me to use this little dipole that came with it. Uh, if you didn't have the orange module, you can probably find like an SMA coupler or something similar to make that work. Uh, just search online. So another potential problem that could arise is if I use this as is, the internal radio will be transmitting along with the spectrum radio, which is wasting power and potentially causing undue interference. So what I read online was if you hold down this button and turn it on at the same time, you get a menu. Now the first option is for range checking. It's like a lower power mode. The second option turns off the internal transmitter. So presumably the internal transmitter is not transmitting and only my spectrum is. So I'll be right back. I'm going to plug in the beast. Okay, so the beast is plugged in. Um, and as you can see, the internal radio is off, which the light's not lit. But if I move the ailerons, the ailerons move. If I move the elevator and the rudder and lastly throttle, it appears that everything works great, so um, this is fantastic. I consider this a success. Uh, I'll be able to use my Futaba to fly these little E-Flight Micros. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and can get something out of it and, and make something your own.